Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news coming to us tonight from Pine Knob Music Theater, where tonight's Carlos Santana concert abruptly ended after the iconic guitarist collapsed on stage about an hour into his show. This is video that has already gone viral, showing the 74-year-old waving to fans as he was helped off the stage, but it's already been viewed more than 20,000 times. And right. It just happened. Yeah, uh, and you might remember late last year, Santana underwent an unscheduled heart procedure, later saying in an interview, one of his arteries was 94% blocked. We have a crew headed to Pine Knob. We'll bring you the very latest throughout this newscast. Our other top story tonight at 11, a mother and her four-year-old daughter in the ICU after a deadly hit and run crash on Detroit's east side. Police say a stolen truck hit them at Beaconsfield and Corville last week with everyone in that car then taking off. Our Pamela Osborne is live tonight at DPD headquarters and Pam witnesses told police there was a chase before the crash. So how are police responding to this? You know, I asked them about that, Kimberly, and DPD says their officers were not chasing this truck, a truck which they confirm was stolen. Now, the three men inside of that truck, they took off, leaving a world of hurt behind. Everybody on the block came out, and you knew something terrible happened. Shamir Duncan was one of the neighbors seen on this home surveillance video rushing to help after a violent crash left a mother and daughter trapped in the wreckage of this car. The driver did not survive. A good guy. Worked every day, worked at Chrysler. Wanda Robinson says her daughter, Marquita Sanders, and granddaughter, Anasia Fraley, were riding with the young man when a stolen Ford F-150 hit them at Beaconfield in Corville on the city's east side last Thursday. This is four-year-old Anasia now. She got pins on her leg. She had bleeding on her brain. She got like a whole bunch of spots in her face. She and mom Marquita are both still in the hospital. Marquita's being treated for broken ribs, a collapsed lung and other injuries. It was just devastating. Robinson wants the men seen running from the scene of the accident to be caught. An innocent man that lost their life and these people are still on the run. So does Duncan, who was relieved to learn that mom and daughter did survive. I couldn't believe that somebody could be that heartless and leave a child out there like that. Not even check on them. The pair have a long recovery ahead, a recovery that may be a bit easier if they can be sure that the person who did this can't hurt anyone else again. When is this endless crime going to stop? And that little girl is going to have to learn how to walk all over again. She's got a broken femur that she's dealing with. And then there's the other part of this. That mother and daughter do not know that the driver of that vehicle did not survive the accident. So lives really forever changed here. If you have any information about the men that were inside of that truck, please give DPD a call. Reporting live tonight outside of Detroit Police Headquarters, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. I hope somebody knows something or they will come forward in this. This is just awful. Pam, we appreciate it. New information tonight about the mass shooting suspect now charged with seven counts of first degree murder. Police believe the 21 year old suspect dressed as a woman to conceal his identity while unleashing the attack at a July 4th parade that he had allegedly planned for weeks. Investigators also revealing police were called to the suspect's home twice in 2019 for threats of violence and suicide. During the attack, police say he was armed with five weapons, including a high powered rifle he used to fire more than 70 rounds. Our Nick Monticelli is in Highland Park, Illinois, the latest U.S. community terrorized by a mass shooting. When it came back through the triage area, you, know, you could see the bodies on the ground, and it was, it was horrifying. The stories emerging since yesterday morning's 4th of July parade shooting are nothing short of terrifying. Like Matt and Lindsay Melton working in her smoothie shop on the parade route. And all of a sudden, we saw the high school band running, and someone yelled, shooter, and, and then we just... You know, we're sh shoveling in as many people as we could take. Jackie Meyer vividly remembers what her niece said as she ran for cover. My six-year-old niece came running to my home a few blocks away and said that she was running from the man with all the fireworks. But these stories are only the beginning of what they have to say. Less than 48 hours after the mass shooting, they are talking about gun control. The gun used was an AR-15 style rifle. It was purchased legally and more than 70 shots were fired. The fact that he was able to buy 
a, a, a military style rifle. We have a, a close friend who delivered all three of our kids, a doctor. He ran into the fire and into the shooting and described unspeakable injuries, bodies that were eviscerated, he said. He's never seen anything like it in an ER. And this person was able to buy that gun, you know, without issue at the age of 18. It would have been maybe a single magazine and far less shots fired, right, than the 60 or so that were just continuing to rain, out, rain down on us. And if you haven't, you know, having gone through that now and just seeing the bullets coming down and hearing, I mean, it was, it was, it was just horrific. And I, don't, I just don't understand why we need to have those type of weapons um, available to anybody. Our lawmakers have to do better. They have to focus. They have to really think through how this happens um, and do something about it. In Highland Park, Illinois, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. A home, in, a home invasion in Ypsilanti Township leads to a lengthy police chase that ends in a fiery crash. Somehow everyone survived the crash, but a woman driving on Ford Boulevard was hit nearly head on with the suspect's vehicle immediately oh, catching wow. fire. Witnesses tell us three people inside that SUV all got out on their own, tried to make a run for it, but two of them were arrested. Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office says this started when the three broke into a home in Superior Township and stole the homeowner's SUV. Again, the woman driving the car that was hit suffered only minor injuries. The two suspects who were in custody are aged 15 and 17. They are in the hospital, though, with non-life-threatening injuries, we're told. The third suspect, though, is still on the loose tonight. All right, let's turn now to the forecast on another hot and humid night across Metro Detroit. Check in with uh, Andrew, tracking some storms headed our way. And Kimberly and Devin, those storms mainly south of the city of Detroit, but still affecting parts of southeast Michigan. <clears throat> you can see that here in parts of Monroe County, but more storm activity out toward Kalamazoo and south central Michigan, about to move right into Lenawee County once again. We've already seen some of these heavy downpours occur within the past couple of hours when you join us at 10 o'clock on Local 4 Plus. Here, are some of the, here is some of that heavy rain. Now, none of this is severe. There might be a few areas of gusty winds, but the main uh, concerns here are the heavy rain that's occurring in these areas of red right here, and also all this lightning, at least a few dozen lightning strikes happening here, and even more, once again, off to our west. You can see that here now in parts of Hillsdale County, about to enter into Lenawee County. So places like Morency and areas just to the west of Adrian will be hit with some heavy rain and some lightning within the next 15 to 30 minutes. Rest of Southeast Michigan, I-94 northward, generally drier, but it is warm and muggy out there. 80 degrees for now, 83 is what it feels like, and by dawn, showers and storms we're seeing now will be gone, but it remains pretty warm. Temperatures around 68 to 70 degrees for the start of Wednesday. More on the chance of rain for tomorrow and your next seven-day forecast in minutes. Hey, Andrew, thank you. A car crash turns into a gun battle tonight on Detroit's west side with one man killed and another rushed to the hospital. Police say two cars crash into each other near Greenfield and West Outer Drive. Then a fight broke out. Three men in one of the cars ran away and were followed by two others in the other vehicle. Police say the two groups started shooting at each other, killing one man and injuring another. Right now, one man is in custody. And tonight a vigil was held in southwest Detroit for a man shot to death in what police are describing as a dispute between neighbors. You see several family members and friends showed up paying tribute to 27-year-old Douglas Wallace. Police say he was shot and killed in front of his home by his neighbor this morning. This is on Sharon Street near Dix. Wallace's family says it's not the first time the two got into a fight. You've had problems with this neighbor for a minute now, man. We called the police. We told him several times that, you know, this guy's over here threatening him, my brother. He's got a gun. So he even went and got him a legal gun because he felt threatened by this guy. Police say the suspect was taken into custody after barricading himself inside his home for a time. All right, now to a local 4 News update. Three people were taken into custody related to the murder of an Ypsilanti man while he was broadcasting on Facebook Live. 46-year-old Terrell Smith was known for his live streams, which he called Rell's Corner. Last week, someone commented during the live broadcast and threatened him. Minutes later, a gunman drove up to Smith's home and shot him to death. Right now, a man and two women are facing charges, but police say they're looking for other people who are responsible. 
Tomorrow, the race for governor will take center stage in downtown Grand Rapids with the top four polling Republican candidates sharing the same stage. Uh, you can watch that debate, by the way, live 7 p.m. at clickondetroit.com. We'll stream it on Local 4 Plus. Our Mar McDonald will be in Grand Rapids. We'll have uh, live post-debate coverage at 10 and 11 p.m. Now just four weeks away from the August 2nd primary.